Good morning. It's 5 a.m. here again. Got something I got to talk to you about. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and turn in your King James Bible, <coughs> excuse me, to Proverbs chapter 6. There is something that has come to my attention that I have to talk to you about that is disturbing. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 12 on to 19. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 12 on to 19. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and follow me along in the scriptures we will be looking at, okay? Proverbs chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 19. A naughty person. A wicked man walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. <laughs> he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, an heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Jump down to verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and rebukes of instruction are the way of life. Let's read that again. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Interesting, eh? Now, turn in your King James Bible, the real Bible, to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, chapter 24. 2 <clears throat> Chronicles, chapter 24. We will be reading verses 15 on to verse 22 in Second Chronicles chapter 24. Backstory, real quick. This is talking about Joash. Joash, who was who was king in Israel. Who was a, who was a, one of the kings? Okay. He was hid in the temple of the Lord by Jehoiada. The priest um, who rescued Joash from being put to death when Athaliah, a woman, took the throne. Okay? And Jehoiada nurtured this Joash and taught him right. 
and did many things for the Lord. And he was even buried in the sepulchers of the kings. And we will see that. But that's the backstory, okay? Jehoiada was a priest and rescued uh, this Joash, this king, during the rampage of Athaliah, a woman who ruled in Israel or in Judah, one of the two, beg your pardon. Okay? And he did very many good things for the Lord and taught this Joash right. Okay, that's the backstory there. Let's read now, and you can read the whole backstory if you wish. Hint, hint, on your own time in ver uh, chapter 23 and 24, the whole backstory. So read that on your own time. But let's read, uh, let's read this now, okay? Second Chronicles chapter 24, verses 15 under verse 22. But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days when he died. An hundred and thirty years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. <laughs> now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah. Okay, so it was in Judah. But let's continue. And made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. After the death of Jehoiada, you know, who was guiding Joash. Okay, let's read. And they left the house of the Lord. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them, to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. Uh -huh. Let's read. And the Spirit of God, capital S, came upon Zechariah the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith God, why transgress ye the commandments, the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? <laughs> because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against him, and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it and require it. And then you, uh, if we were to continue reading from verses 23 on to verse 27, you would see the consequence of his actions for doing that. Wasn't good. Now, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 25 now, okay? This is talking about Amaziah now, okay? Amaziah went against, what was it, the uh, Ethiopians, I believe it was? Da, 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 hold on one second. But anyway, Amaziah went to battle against a great army. And he was given the victory over this great army because he trusted in the Lord. Okay? Then he got a little too proud of himself. Okay? Started thinking that he was, uh, you know. <clears throat> oh, oh, here. <clears throat> Start thinking pretty good of himself. And he, can, he actually started the backslide. Second Chronicles chapter 25 verses 11 under verse 16. Second Chronicles 25 verses 11 under verse 16. 
Go ahead and read the context on your own time. And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote the children of Seir ten thousand and other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive and brought them onto the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock that they all were broken in pieces. But the soldiers of the army which Amaziah sent back that they should not go with him to battle fell upon the cities of Judah, from Samaria, even unto Beth Horon, and smote three thousand of them, and took much spoil. Okay? Now it came to pass, after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, okay, so, the Edomites again, excuse me, never, never mind, let's continue. That, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah and he sent unto him a prophet which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, little g there, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? Check this out. And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear, why shouldest thou be smitten? Who are you to talk to me? You're, you're not of my counsel, who are you? And he, this guy happened to be a prophet. Hello. Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. So, we see in Second Chronicles chapter 24, when Jehoiada was, uh, had died, Joash, who really wasn't, his heart really wasn't right, and also in, uh, we see Amaziah, <clears throat> in, verse, in chapter 25, verse 2, talking about Amaziah, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. And we see Joash was rebuked by the son of Jehoiada. And we see that the Spirit of God came upon him. And we see Amaziah, after he had done this, won this great victory, he took the gods of the children of Edom of Seir and set them up to be his own gods. And he got a little high on himself, and the Lord sent a prophet to correct him. And in verse 16, we see that Amaziah said to the prophet, more or less, shut up. I didn't. I don't want to hear what you're saying. You're not of my little thing here. Be quiet, why, or else you'll be killed. And reproof of instruction are the way of life. Hebrews, one verse in Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. One verse. Verse 11, Hebrews 12, verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness 
unto them which are exercised thereby. And of course, go now to the book of Acts, chapter 7. Don't worry, we ain't going to read the whole thing. Acts chapter 7. The rebuke of Stephen unto his people, the Jew. It is after this. Acts chapter 7 is the official rejection of the gospel by the Jewish people as a nation. And then we see in Acts chapter 8, it going to the Gentile. I, okay? That's why Acts chapter 7 is so significant. And we see in Acts chapter 7, Stephen, given the whole rundown, given, not the whole rundown, but a basic rundown of things, Verse 54 on to verse 60 in Acts chapter 7. Okay? Acts 7 verses 54 on to verse 60. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And unlike in Acts chapter 2, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, looked up steadfastly unto heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Stephen was getting killed by his own people for rebuking them, for correcting them chastening them and they killed him for it and while he was being killed laid not the sin to their charge and of course look at verses 51 on to verse 53 see sometimes when you are rebuked sometimes it takes a kicking in the stones so to speak. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers whom have received the law by the dispos disposition of angels and have not kept it. Ooh, ooh, that must have hurt. Obviously it did. Some of you getting the point? Now, second John. Second John verses nine under verse ten. Third John, excuse me. Did I say second John? Beg your pardon. Third John verses nine and ten. Third John nine and ten. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come 
I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth, <laughs> and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth, casteth them out of the church. <laughs> Why is that funny? Well, it's it's not really, but <sighs> You know, brethren, the longer you walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, He will correct you, chasten you, and rebuke you through His Word, the King James Bible, the real Bible. But see, when you get a little on the stubborn side, um, He will also use members of the Church of the Living God, you know, His body, to correct you chasing you and rebuke you. And the longer you walk with the Lord, you, you see, see, brethren, just like what it says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Okay? Just like it says in Proverbs 6, 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the ways, are the way of life. Personally, I have been corrected, chastened, and rebuked by many of the brethren of the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters. My brother from the Netherlands has corrected me. My brother from Australia has corrected me. My brother from Northern Ireland has corrected me. My brother from Scotland has corrected me. Uh, my, uh, uh, my brother from, um, even from Croatia has corrected me. Several brethren, my countrymen, have corrected me, rebuked me. Yes, yes, and even a sister from Germany has corrected me, rebuked me. And see, brethren, and this, see, this comes with time. This comes with time. Because when you are rebuked, after you, you know, it, when you're chastened and stuff like that, it, it hurts. But you get to a point in your walk where you're like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you. You see, I appreciate, personally, I appreciate when my brothers and sisters, not you Jesuit coadjutor fakes, you guys don't count because you ain't saved. You ain't saved. You can, uh, Beg your pardon, you can go pound a little sand, as far as I'm concerned. But see, when the brethren and sisters are used to the Lord to correct you, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It shows that the Lord loves you, because you are of his body, and he wants you to be corrected. It's, you appreciate rebukes, you appreciate appreciate corrections. You appreciate chastisement. I do. Because then it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Okay? I am accountable to the Lord through His Word. But I am accountable also unto the church of the living God, the body of Christ. 
And I have been corrected and chastened many times, rebuked many times by my fellow brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God. Like I said, you, you fake Jesuit coadjutors and infiltrators. Here. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's a wonderful thing. I love it when you hurt me. <laughs> but, um... You got to watch out for people who get their feathers ruffled, who get rebuked themselves, but turn the tables and uh, throw it back at them. There is one specific individual who I am thinking of, who I will not name, who I have seen in the past and several other of my brethren have as well, who, um, uh, who this individual has a pride problem. I have a pride problem, but see, I know it. And when the Lord beats up on me through, uh, by, either by himself, his word, or if I get a little too stubborn, you, the body of Christ, and my threshing instrument, my wife, okay, he will, through many means, correct me, beat up on me, so that it will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Okay? When my pride rears up in me, uh, Lord, especially nowadays, especially with how close we are to being caught up, um, I get, I get whooped. But see, when I am rebuked, personally, I do not be like, oh, thank you, but you're doing... There's a certain individual who has been rebuked before for a certain thing and has, on two occasions now, on two occasions, I have seen, been like, oh, thank you. Thank you for the rebuke. But you have done this. Taking the rebuke, so, huh? but yet then taking that rebuke and then turning it into a, a rebuke himself against the one who has been doing the rebuking. Ah, 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 ah. That's a problem there, buddy boy. That's a problem. That's a problem. Give me a chapter and verse. Give me a chapter and verse where someone in like the Pauline epistles, you know, the doctrine for us today in the time of the Gentiles. Um, give you an example. When Paul rebuked Peter, do you, do you have... A testimony of Peter after being rebuked say uh, turn the tables on Paul and start rebuking him do you see Peter doing like oh oh you're right Paul you're right but who, who are you you know I I walk with Jesus personally but you see it's a problem if you are personally rebuked for something and you're like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But here's what you've done wrong. Uh, 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 buddy, no, 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 no. Oh, believe me, I understand. It puts a bitter taste in your mouth when you are chastened, rebuked, corrected. Oh, boy. But, you know, brethren, I, and I addressed this in a, a older video of mine, when challenged, I'm. When that happens, 
when you are rebuked, corrected, chastened, that kind of thing, instead of putting up your dukes, standing your ground, you need to get on your knees. Hi. And like, okay, Lord, what do I do with this? Lord, correct me, chase me, show me, and uh, you're, you're saying something to me. Show me thy truth. Thy word is truth. And if you are one who has been rebuked, who has been corrected and you're digging your heel in the sand you have some issues that you need to work on with the Lord okay you really do you really do and, th and brethren with what's going on right nowadays that the Lord is going to be calling us up Quickly. I saw um, my brother from Croatia make a comment about that. Um, and I was, I, that one, uh, my brother from Croatia, if you even watch me, I, um, I think you do every once in a while. But um, that, was, that one comment that you left on that video, that, that, yeah, that really, cut me too see see that's the way it works that's the way it works so brethren be on your guard of, of pride it hurts when you're rebuked yes it does but you don't when you when you are corrected when you're chasing when you are rebuked yeah you might have a moment where you want to fight back but I'm telling you brethren if you dig your heel in the sand and when someone who is correcting you out of love through the scripture uh, you know the Lord's doing it and you you'll be like oh yeah yeah thank you but here's what you're doing and you deflect that's a problem. That's the spirit of pride if I've ever seen it. So be careful. Be careful. Please. You know, when I was corrected in the mouth of two or three witnesses, actually several witnesses, <laughs> about my error as regarding uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 3. My error. I was in error. And the Lord worked heavily on me on that. And I publicly repented of it and corrected myself. Boy, that, that, that really brought a tidal wave against me. But what could I do? The Lord shewed me truth. And he used his word. And also, when I was being a little stubborn, the Lord used the church of the living God, the body of Christ. And I got to that point where it's like, I can't fight it. I won't fight it because you won't win. Be on your guard against pride, brethren. And let me give you some advice. I'm not an elder. I've only been saved for 12 years. Okay, I'm not. But instead of digging your heel in the sand, okay, instead of when it comes from a brother or sister, never mind these coadjutors, never mind these fakes, Never mind these infiltrators, okay? Never mind them. You're truly saved and born again, brethren of the Church of the Living God, okay? When one of them rebukes you, corrects you, and you know, the Lord's doing it through them, 
instead of immediately fighting, instead of standing your ground, first consider, okay, show me thy truth, Lord. It is, okay, Lord, am I, am I in error? Am I doing something wrong? Give me eyes to see, ears to hear, and an understanding heart, please. Uh, if there's something I did, but Lord, show me, uh, get chasing me, rebuke me, correct me, that I may be zealous therefore and repent, please. And if, you know, consider thyself First, whether maybe, hey, here's a here's a here's a thought. What if you're wrong, right? <laughs> you know. And I I have seen now personally, actually now on um, several occasions, one specific individual. who has been rebuked about something by two brothers. And on both of those occasions now, I have seen others could testify. And, and by the way, if any of you know who I am talking about, out of courtesy in the comments, if you decide to do so, shh, let's leave well enough alone. Okay? But I've seen it now twice. Where this individual was rebuked for something that he was doing, maybe not personally, but he was rebuked, and he said, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. I am more than willing to repent, but you did this. That's, that's not right. That's not right. It isn't. That is to you who do something like that ought to be a whoa wait a minute get down on your knees it's like whoa, whoa lord there's there's something wrong here there's something wrong here open my eyes give me eyes to see lord if there's something uh, my pride getting the best of me Or are some of you too afraid to go that far? Oh, it hurts, boy. Oh, <laughs> it hurts. But afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So can consider these things, okay? I gotta go. I, uh, I got stuff to do. I gotta go to work. Um, I love you. Consider these things, please. And, and, and hey, okay, hey. Hey, look at me. Okay, look at me. Um, if what I'm talking about has offended you, and you're my brother, could you just, just consider? Could you just maybe... Go to the Lord in prayer? Could you maybe humble yourself a little bit and be like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Lord, <laughs> I know, it hurts. Yes, it does. But come on. We can't be messing around with these petty little things this soon, this close to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. We can't. Okay? So, if you're my brother, you're my sister, and, and what I'm talking to you about is offending you, please consider these things at least. And if you're going to be stiff-necked, Good luck.
Anyway, I got to go. I, I got stuff I got to do. I love you. I'm praying for you, my brethren. You know, my my countrymen. You know. And, uh, my brother from Australia, the Netherlands, Scotland, Northern Ireland, um, 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 Darlington, Croatia. I pray for so many of you. Um, I love you, and I will see you in the next video if there is one, whenever or whatever that shall be, okay? I love you. Gotta go. Bye.